I'm going to show you how to use Zapier webhooks in WordPress. In general, webhooks are basically the glue for any kind of automation application you want to build. So it's really important to learn them. So the first thing, what even are webhooks, then how to create variables in WordPress, then how to send those variables to Zapier, and then how to use this received data in Zapier and save it into Google Sheet. Those are the things we're going to tackle today. So basically, webhooks are just communication between two kinds of servers where we can send in kinds of data to a server between an application. So if you want to build any kind of automation, you need to know how to use webhooks. And if you want to build this application, you will need to have a Zapier premium account because Zapier webhooks are premium apps and you don't have them in the free version. So the first things first, we will try to capture all the information in this Google Sheet and those are the rows we will try to capture. So a na first name, a last name, a street address, a street number, a city address, an email and a specific question. So first we're going to go into WordPress and we create a new app and in this app we can see on the side here variables and these variables are what we're going to use to send and store the information. So we can, for example, create a string, a boolean, number or date all those kinds of different variables. So we can create a Boolean variables we're gonna need for later. It's called Sapier suck, so Sapier success, which is Boolean just means it's true or false. So then we're gonna go and create a new node. We just drag that here. We call it capture. And in this node, we're just gonna start off with like a normal text. So we're gonna introduce what we're gonna do. So hello. So, to introduce the user of what we even want to do. Then the next thing is, the first thing we want to find is the name. So we go here to the capture information, down to the pre-chosen the pre person name. And then we're going to ask the person a question. So, please provide your full name. And then we're going to create a new variable, which we're going to call name. And you see, this is not a string, this is going to be an object because WordPress saves the full name into different kinds of things. It serves it in first name and into last name. And we can use that later to extract the information in Sapir. Then the next thing we want to get is the address. So we're going to use full address. And we can ask the users, please provide your full address. And then we're going to specify it with street, number, and city. And then we're going to store this into address. Then the next thing we want to capture is the email address. So we're going to say, please provide your email. And also we're going to create the variable email and we're going to store it in that. And then after that, we also want to have like a specific question. For example, if you create a lead um, bot on a website and you do it for like a realtor and then you want to ask the person why they even go on the site. Do they want to sell an object or do they want to buy something or anything that's not predefined. So we're just going to use raw input. And then we asked what brought you here today? And then we can save that into a new variable called question. And then we have, as we see here, all our variables saved and accessible. Then we now need to find a way to send this information over to Sapier. For this, we have to use code. So we create some custom code for this. And in this code, it basically works like this. If you want to access variables, for example, the name, you can't just use name because he doesn't know anything to do with that. If you want to access any kind of variables, we go workflow and then dot the name of the variable. For example, address, email, or saper success. Those are the variables we can access in WordPress. And first what we're gonna do is go our boolean, which we had save your success, and then we set it to false. So this is our base start. Then we have to create um, a constant where we save in our information that we're going to send to Sapier. So we create a constant and we call it payload and then we define it and we set it into curly brackets 
And in that, we have to define something that we're going to send, so the data we send. So we send out name, we set a double point, and this name variable is now equal to workflow dot name. So the variable in our workflow that we captured. And then we do the same thing for address, for email, and also for the question. So now we have to find a way to use this payload and send it to Sapia. We can do that by creating some logic. We're going to use a try function for that. And this is all basic JavaScript. So if you don't understand it, you can just like read into JavaScript. It's not been that complicated. Then we're going to use a catch to catch any kind of errors. You define the error that's going to create it. And then we console log, which basically just we write down what happened. So in this try function, we're going to use something called Exeus, which is basically just a way to send out requests over HTTP. So we're going to use a new constant called response. This is just the industry standard for something like this. We're going to use an await. So we wait that something happens. And then you use exeus.post. And in here, we're going to provide the link where we post it to and the data we send, which is our payload. But we don't have anything to send it to yet. So we have to go into Sapia. And in Sapia, we're going to create a new SAP. A new SAP is basically just a flow for how it's going to work. So in this new SAP, we're going to choose a webhook, which like you see, it's a premium version. So you don't have it in the basic one. Then we choose an event. So what's going to happen? We can either catch a hook, we can uh, catch a raw hook, which is just unstructured data, or receive something else. So we say we catch the hook, then we continue, the triggers are relevant for us, and then this is our link to our Sapier hook. Also don't share that hook with anyone, otherwise they will be able to use it. So we add this hook in here, and this is done. After that, we also create like something called an expression, which is just a thing that happens because right now there is no connection between our node and the end, and we call it just which creates a conditional. So this is also really nice. They have an AI where you can just describe what it's supposed to do, and then it creates the code for you. So if say pure success is true, then we will end the whole thing. Now we have to test our trigger, so it's going to listen, and we can go into our bot and try it out to get some data. So we introduce ourselves to the bot, then it asks us to provide a full name, we provide a full name, then the street, the way we described it, then our email, It also checks if it's an email, like not if it's a real email, but if the structure works as an email. And then we provide, um, so we tested all that, then we send out information, we see it worked, it sent out a webhook, we go back to Sapia, we test our trigger, and it found our data. We see here the name, it was not a string, but it was an object, so it's split into first and last name. We see our name, we see the city, the street, the address, the email, and the question. Then we can continue with something, and the next, now we can see where we want to do it. We can send it to as an email, Google, Google Docs, but we want to use it and add it to our sheet. So we use sheet, then we use create spreadsheet row, because we want to add it to our row. We go continue. We choose an account, you have to connect your account beforehand. Continue, then you choose where the sheet you created is saved to. Then you choose the sheet, the workspace in the sheet. And now we have to add each data that we received towards the sheet. So we have the row first name, as you can see in the sheet, 
and then we can take the data that we catched. So we catch the data first name, we catch the data last name, and the, the address of the street, the number, and the city. Also, this is why you should create your sheet or the information you want to capture first, so you have a better idea of what to add where, because otherwise you will run into all sorts of problems. And the question. Now we can continue. And then we test the action. And we see it has been added to our Google Sheet. Then we can publish our SAP. The SAP is going to be published. And then we go back to BotPress. We restart the conversation. We interact with the bot. We capture the variable name. Then the city. Also the email. And the question. We send it out. It's going to be saved in the webhook. It's going to be sent. And we see it was saved in our CRM. And here again our whole Sapier workflow and you see it's pretty easy and simple and you can use that with all kinds of things. So if you want to add anything else, you can just edit it and reuse the information as long and as, as many applications as you want to. I hope this was helpful and if you liked it, then subscribe and see you in the next video.